Absolute Emperor, Napoleonic War Game Battles by Boyd Bruce. It occurred to me the other day when we were doing our live stream, somebody mentioned, hey, I really like your Absolute Emperor videos. I haven't done one of these in a while. So I thought, and that made me feel like this guy right here on the cover right here. Oh, facepalm. So I thought, hey, that's a great idea for a video. In fact, why don't we go ahead and do another battle? But instead, let's do something that we've never done before. We're going to do a battle by the book. Well, kind of. I'm going to show you how to set up a battle by the book. And then, depending on how long that takes, if it takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes, that's a pretty good video right there. We'll call it quits. We'll come back next week. We'll actually play that video. So for today, let's just look at how Boyd tells us to set up a battle. And the first thing you need to do, of course, is set up your armies. Let's take a closer look at these two millimeter bad boys right here. We are going to do a basic British versus French fight. Both of these armies are built using the points cost that Boyd presents for fair armies. He has some additional information on um, tournament play. And I wanted to do this because these Osprey rule books are phenomenal for replay value. There is so much content packed into these 64 pages. If I was a war game producer and I was making 256 page books, I'd probably feel kind of embarrassed that I had to use that much wordage to get this, get even less impact than you get out of a game like this masterpiece right here. So we're talking about the army building, and he gives us a nice little list here, and we're going to go through it real quick. The forces that I have here are, now he says, you know, you could use 100 points to build a core. One core, one core. See, one commander, one commander. Yeah, 100 points is maybe a little bit small. Maybe it's perfect, but, you know, I like to have armies that can do something. So I tend to, uh, for those of you that aren't aware, different units will have different activations. And it's very simple. Elites activate, they shoot, they fight on a 2-up. Uh, veterans on a 3-up. What, what do we call it? Uh, seasoned on a 4-up and conscripts on a 5-up. Each of these units is going to have, I think it's like 8 hit points. And once you're down to 5, once you've taken 5 hits, you, you're at minus 1. So you, you want, your conscript will only be acting on 6s. Now, and that's what I have these little red dice for, is uh, hit counters. Now, I actually went with 110 points. It gives me a little bit more flexibility with these units. 110 points. And so we're looking at, on the part of the British, it's going to be two... Get my cheat sheet here to remind myself. They're going to have two seasoned line cavalry. That's these guys in the back and two veteran infantry, and then here's their commander. He's got an Alana 5. Now, the French have a commander with an Alana 5 as well, because one of those little rules that you can miss, if you don't read the rules carefully, is that a commander can only boss around as many units as he has Alan. I'm assuming at the start of the game. You spend Alan during the game, and you know, you're know you not going to have one of these guys scupper off just because he wanted to use one of his Elan for a reroll. The game is over when your commander is reduced to zero Elan. So to keep the points the same, I just said, you know what, we're going to have two very experienced generals here with five Elan. Now, for the French, you can see we've only got one unit of cavalry there in the back. They are seasoned heavy cavalry. And then we've got three veteran infantry and we've also got one field gun. So a little slower to react. You know, they've only got one zooming unit compared to two over here. Uh, it is going to be um, line cavalry versus heavy cavalry. So this should prove to be an interesting battle. Now, Boyd tells us that the side with the fewer troops will always be the defender. Skadoosh. That's going to be our British. And, oh, I should point out that, well, let me finish the thought. The side with the large army sets up second and goes first on the first turn, regardless of the lawn, all right? Uh, also, the defenders get to, what did I say? They always be the defender, and they assign the side of the table. Now, army construction is only half of the battle, and one of the parts of games that, that tends to get short shrift, particularly for solo war gamers who just kind of throw things out, or if you are primarily playing scenarios such as old Wagram there. And as I film this, I believe we are, I believe today is the anniversary of a little shindig you might have heard of called Waterloo, which I thought was in here. Yeah, you can fit all of Waterloo on one table, this rule set. Here it is. There it is. Boy, it's a really crowded table. Look at that. This should look familiar to anybody that's familiar with Waterloo. 
Look at all those boys trying to take uh, Mont Saint Jean, Hougomont. I don't see a sand pit in here. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine. It's a great scenario if you got enough figures for it. If you're playing on a six by four table. Now, I am, of course, playing with two millimeter figures. I'm playing with these lovely two millimeter figures from Irregular Miniatures. I'm a big fan of these because if you look at them, now there's some guys out there selling two millimeter figures that fit on like two inch by three inch bases. They're not figures. They're literally just blocks. They're literally just a blob that he's inscribed a grid work on, and then he kind of paints it, and I guess it's okay, but man, I'm not here to play with toy blocks. I'm here to play with toy miniatures, and when you look at a an irregular miniature, you can see the individual troopers in there. It doesn't take that much to paint them up. You know, the individual flags, right? We look at these horses. Look at how good these horses look. You know, they, they kind of look like horses. And it was way easier to paint these guys than you might imagine. You just dab, 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 dab on each of those little horse heads. Give them the same treatment on the back. And then I just, you know, heavy cavalry. I just... They're, now, they're not heavy cavalry here. They're line cavalry. And again, the flag's so easy to paint. I painted mine green. Take a look at our, our you know, just high contrast paints. Those are your friends, as always. There's your your French... I'm going to say it again, seasoned heavy cavalry. I just, I, I love the way these figures look. And you can, when you get three stands together, you know, that's, that. this is a core, that's, these are divisions, okay? You need to have a four to three ratio. One thing I'll warn those of you that are new to the channel, we have a couple of different formations in this game. Of course, everyone knows what line looks like. The question is, what do you do when you're in attack column or if you're marching in column? That's easy as well. But what if these guys form square? Well, I can't form a square with only three sides. So our squares look like triangles. But I think you can agree that when you step back, you understand what's really going on here. If you are a real stickler and you wanted to use four bases and then, I don't know, maybe five or six bases for your cavalry, you could, just to make your square look like a square, but we use triangles here in the House of Wargaming, and it's fine. So the next thing we need to talk about is terrain, and let's walk through how Boyd sets up terrain. Always remembering that these guys are going to pick the side that they want to defend, and they're going to set up first, and then these guys are going to set up second, and they will go first on the first turn of the game. The first thing I need to point out is that in the Battle of Bumville, the, the learning scenarios that Boyd presents to us, the forces start out separated by 9 inches. I'm going to separate my forces by 12 inches. I don't know what part of the battlefield we're going to use yet. What we will do is the defender, the French, will choose which... Well, first of all, the British will decide where they're coming in. The French will decide what terrain feature they're defending, and then the British will set up 12 inches away from that feature, and then the defenders will set up on that terrain feature, on or around. So the first thing we have to do to figure out our terrain is roll off. We're going to roll 1d6. Each player rolls d6. Blue coats, blue die. Red coats, red die. We get a 7. No surprises there. If both are even numbers, half the features will be hills. If both are odd, half the features must be built-up areas. Towns, villages, that kind of thing. Otherwise, half the features must be wood. All right, so we're going to have three and a half pieces of wood. Let's call it three larger woods and one small wood, okay? So three large, one small, and then we have three larger features and one smaller features. Standard features are three inches across or three inches linear. And players take turns... With the conditions above, roll off to see who gets to place the first piece of terrain. And the British are going to place the first piece of terrain. And the British are going to go ahead and place a nice defensive piece of terrain. They, of course, are going to be the defenders. So it becomes the French turn. And the French say, I want a large, wide-open battlefield. So I'm going to put some woods way over there. And the British say, I want... More help defending this. So I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to force you... I want to put some woods nice and tight. Nice and close. Let's put some woods... Can we put it right here? Three inches between? 
five, three, it would have to be something like that is some more woods. And remember the British, the attackers are going to get to choose which side of the table they come on. It is the French turn. And the French say, I'm going to be happy to come in on this side of the table. So I will put some more woods up there. And we'll just slide that over so that's kind of on the edge of the battlefield. It may come a little closer. In fact, why don't we do that? We say, no, no, you know what? That's going to be it right there. Three inches away from everything. The British say, fine. If you're going to come in on this side, I want to drop a stream three inches away to complicate your matter. Or a, or a solid river. Fine, says the French. I'm going to put um, one more set of woods. We'll call it right there. And the British, so we got our one, two. Well, we actually have one too many woods now. Oh, no, it's three and a half, right? Is that three inches away? So some of this terrain may not factor into our battle. That's okay. The British really like In fact, We'll slide that over for the British a little bit. And then we'll put the stream right here. And then we have time for the French to lay out one more piece of terrain. And they are perfectly happy to... Because they're going to get to pick, and they're probably going to want to come in on this side. They're going to go ahead and say, you know what? We'll use that stream to protect our flanks. And there's how you set up terrain. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half. I mean, we'll, we'll call it even. We'll call these one and two. It's fine, right? So then the defender gets to set up. The defender assigns the sides of the table. Mm, I didn't realize that. This just got a whole lot worse for the French. It is what it is. The British want to defend this hill. The French have to attack from that direction. All right. Let's set up our British defenders first. To no one's surprise, they're going to put their line infantry on the hill. And then we have to decide what to do with this cavalry. Now, remember that the... Forces have to stay within four inches of their commander. So that's as far away as these cavalry can get. The question is, they say, we're going to put one cavalry on our left. Where are we going to put that second one? And I'm going to roll on a one, two, three. They're going to go with a heavy left. On a four, five, six, they'll put that second one. You know, I take it back. The French, left. the British left themselves just enough room on this side of the table, if we take a look, let me slide over just a little bit. Remember that one set of woods? It's actually a little over four inches away. So the question is, do we want this cavalry unit on the left to come over and we're going to go with a strong right? Or are we going to go with a balanced approach? On a one, two, three, it'll be balanced. And on a four, five, six, it'll be over there. On a five, we're going to go with a strong right hook. So let me move these guys up. We'll bring these guys over here. So we kind of have a reserve over here on the right. The French have opted to throw a right hook. Seeing that the cavalry for the British is on the right, they're going to try and sweep around to their own right and leave this artillery and maybe a reserve of infantry to protect their left flank. The French have the one field gun. They've got three veteran infantry and one seasoned heavy cavalry who is their heavy punching power. Now, the one thing that Mr. Boyd, Mr. Bruce, does not tell us is how long the scenario lasts. The Battle of Bumville starts out eight or nine inches away. The, the forces start nine inches away, and the attackers have eight turns to accomplish their task. I am going to use a... I'm going to give the French ten turns plus a mystery number. I'm going to borrow a concept from Fistful of Lead and roll a d6 at the end of turn number 10. If the result is a 15 or higher, the game is over. If it is not, we'll play on turn 11 and again roll a d6. And if it, with our score is 15 or higher, we will play another turn. Or the game is over, rather. So as each turn goes, we may get to turn 15. Right, Because at the end of turn 15, you're going to roll a 1. But it's highly likely that we are going to end on turn 10 or 11. So the French do, they, they can't, they can't uh, dither very long. That being the case, we're going to put our French column infantry into columns. 
once again, we have a reserve infantry that will hang tight back here as these guys sweep forward. This wood is about four inches across, so the cavalry will be able to sweep around this side if our commander hugs this side. And we should be able to get our our, our reserve infantry. These should be th This should be three inches across, so that's wide enough for them to get through in line. We got a turn to get set up, and then these guys can uh, buy themselves maybe a turn or two by hustling up into this area. This is an interesting scenario. Strong right defense leads to a right hook, a random selection of terrain, primarily woods with a hill to defend. This is an interesting little scenario. It all came apart, came about organically, thanks to the wonderful game design of old boy Bruce and the wonderful editorial content of Osprey. So next week, I think this is probably like a 10-minute video. Yeah, we're doing some short ones. Our battles and our, our chain mail campaign have been awfully long, so maybe a nice shorty. We're kind of due for those. And we'll see the Battle of, of Big Hill next week. Till then, I'm praying for you.